Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about Xbox and of course, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. We're gonna talk about the PlayStation 5 Pro and how many games will have PlayStation 5 Pro modes at its launch. Also, we're gonna talk about the difference between machine learning that is on the PlayStation 5 Pro and what machine learning capabilities the Xbox Series X has. Now, first, let's just start off with Activision. Now, Activision says Call of Duty Black Ops 6 set a new day one opening weekend record, making it the biggest Call of Duty three day opening weekend ever. It had the highest totals PC players ever. It also was the largest day, or I should say a largest increase on Game Pass from any game at any time within the history. So it pretty much is a huge success. Now I see a lot of people trying to downplay uh, the success of the game saying, oh, they're not reporting the numbers and like I always say, a good game is a good game. Don't criticize it because it's not on your preferred platform. Now, in the case of Black Ops 6, it is on everybody's preferred platform, but Xbox owns it. So, of course, you got some people that want to dog the game. But overall, the game is really good. It's getting good reception. I, I like the game, and it's breaking records. So, it's an overall success. And as expected, it is boosting Game Pass numbers. Now, if Microsoft can continue this trend with Stalker 2, with Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, with Flight Simulator 2024, I think Game Pass is going to see its biggest sustained subscription count in the history of the service. And I think that's good overall for the service. I'm a big fan of Game Pass. Although I'm not playing a lot of the games on the Xbox console, I'm still playing these games on my PC and Xbox Game Pass is by far the best value in gaming. Now let's move on a little bit to the Xbox Series S. Now Austin Evans, he tore the system down and he found that they actually did switch to a smaller node for the Xbox Series S. Now the surprising part is the performance. 16 grams, so they took a somewhat substantial amount of weight out of it and this part is missing if you took this part and weighted it as well it would be an even bigger difference what you're looking at here is a smaller heatsink that will have less thermal mass even though the noise is actually kind of similar it's about a 2 db difference actually in favor of the new model but the new xbox series s ran a full five degrees warmer on the exhaust but a five degree difference is not insubstantial so basically you've got the same amount of heat being exhausted out yeah that needs to be sort of dissipated, the console itself is running warmer. Now, mind you, that's not like an insanely hot sort of temperature, but you put a Series S in a little like TV cabin or something where it doesn't have great airflow. We tested in like open air where the fan was actually slightly quieter. But I guarantee you, you put the new Series S in a confined space, you give it a couple years of dust buildup and whatnot, that fan will have to start cranking up much higher. Okay. Yeah. New Xbox Series S is worse. What? Yeah, buddy. Now that's actually pretty crazy that the new Series S is actually worse than the previous one, that it is actually not um, getting rid of the heat as well, or it's getting rid of more heat. So it's actually getting hotter than the previous Series S. Now I'm gonna have to look more into this and, and watch it all in its entirety, but I gotta say that's not a good look for the Series S. And I'm just really disappointed with Microsoft's uh, so-called mid-gen refresh. The Series S, you know, you would expect them to at least make it run more efficiently so that it would just be a cooler running system. It's already pretty small, so I don't know. That's what I was expecting. Now, the Series X, you know my thoughts on that. I wish that they came out with a mid-generation refresh that was more powerful, that would match the PlayStation 5 Pro, and that's not happening. In fact, the Series S, it is a smaller node. It is running more efficiently, unlike the uh, Series S but you're not getting more performance on it. So you'll probably save a little bit on your energy bill. Maybe you'll save $10 for the entire year, which is something. But as far as your games performing better on the uh, new mid-generation refresh Xbox Series X, it's just not gonna happen. And that two terabyte model that they have, it's just a really poor value, especially when you put it right beside the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now let's move on to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 Pro and the differences in the console now some people are under the impression that the xbox series x can do machine learning ai upscaling like the playstation and that is simply not the case now amd is announcing some new features for um rdna4 
that will be coming out. They're also announcing some new features for FSR. Now, FSR 3.1.2 adds frame interpolation into the sample. So basically it's gonna put some frames in there. It's kind of like frame gen, but not really. I think this works more like the uh, frame interpolation that we see on television. So it's gonna give you a smoother appearance by adding in a extra frame there. But this is not machine learning. This is not machine learning AI upscaling. It's a completely different solution that is run by software. And for some reason you have these fringe groups in Xbox. Now I don't want people to mistake regular Xbox fans for these guys. These guys, they're out to lunch. Now these are the same people that told us years back, if you guys remember, the Xbox One had a secret GPU that Microsoft was just gonna flip the switch on and it would make it more powerful than the PlayStation 4. Like it was crazy times. And these are the same people that are coming out with this stuff. Now, just to show you how delusional these posters are, he also says that the Xbox Series X does have machine learning for AI upscaling. And he goes on to say it's beyond RDNA 2 and 3 dedicated machine learning. And like, this is just unbelievable. Now, the Xbox does have a little piece on there that is dedicated to machine learning. It is not enough to do machine learning AI upscaling. It just isn't. It is not on a neural network. So, you know, the Xbox Series X, the silicon that they have in there that they are using for machine learning, it is a trained algorithm and they trained it for auto HDR. So it does the auto HDR on the Xbox Series console. And I will say it's pretty fantastic. Auto HDR, it works well. Of course, I would prefer natural HDR, but in games that don't offer it, it is a good option and options are always a great thing. This is not anywhere near the same capabilities or performance of the PlayStation 5 Pro. So let's just kind of go through the thread here. And usually I don't do this, but I just want to thrash these guys because they're so out to lunch. Now I wrote, still waiting for the secret GPU to unlock on the Xbox One. These guys are crazy. Series X does not have machine learning accelerated hardware for AI upscaling. The machine learning it has is small and only used for auto HDR. If it could do machine learning AI upscaling, a sane person would think four years into the gen, they would. And it just doesn't make sense. If Microsoft had this advantage, if they were able to do this, they would be doing this. We are four years into the gen and some PlayStation 5 games are outperforming the Xbox Series X. The next Xbox is coming out in two to three years. So this generation is pretty much over. They're losing this generation to uh, Sony two to one in North America and three to one and four to one in other regions. So if they could turn the notch up on their games running on the Xbox, they would use this technology. It is clearly not capable of it. So this guy, he kind of goes off and you know he's trying to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'll tell you the comment that he said here. So this guy responds, he goes, pal, once again, Microsoft literally said it can do machine learning upscaling. It's an, you're an Xbox fanboy or an ex Xbox fanboy, all upset by others getting the experience your games, you're a clown, whatever, whatever, whatever. He goes, 90 tops is enough for machine learning upscaling. Now, where the hell is the Xbox Series X doing 90 tops of eight bit integers? It's just, it's not doing it. So I don't know where he's getting that information from. But I responded to him saying, where is it then? Microsoft also said the Xbox Series X was the only console to do mesh shaders, and that was not true. And he goes, where is it? I don't know, pal. And I say DLSS was out way before consoles stopped about the uh, saying that there was no need for it on consoles till now. It clearly can't do machine learning A upscaling. If they could, they would have done it. If we're talking about Microsoft here, they are a software giant. If they were capable of the same thing, they would have used it. Instead, they're using it for auto HDR. And he goes on to say, why do you bring DLSS into this? This is deep learning, a different model to what PSSR or FSR4 will use. And DLSS is a NVIDIA only technology. Why the heck are you talking about it? And no, they won't make an AI upscaler unless needed, which now it is. So anyone that knows anything about uh, DLSS and uh, machine learning AI, you would know right here that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Deep learning is advanced machine learning. It's on a neural network that is trained to get better over time. There is a difference. Now, machine learning can also be used 
as an algorithm like Microsoft is doing for their auto HDR. They are two separate things, so he doesn't even have the basic knowledge of the technology, yet he's trying to argue with me that the Xbox Series X has the same capabilities as the PlayStation 5's Pro's PSSR. Now, I tweeted this out as well, and you can see here on the screen, it says, Deep Learning is a field of artificial intelligence that uses neural networks to teach computers to process data in a way that mimics the human brain. Deep Learning neural networks or artificial neural networks are made up of many layers of interconnected nodes or artificial neurons that work together to solve complex problems. And this is the difference between PSSR and FSR and the stuff that is on the Xbox console. But he did respond and he goes on to say again for the 80th time, anything that can do machine learning can do machine learning upscaling. And that is categorically false. They don't have the same performance. They don't have the same compute performance. They don't have the same dedicated hardware to do this. I don't understand why some of the fringe, and I really want to clarify that this is a fringe group of Xbox gamers, believe this nonsense. It is not as capable as the PlayStation 5 Pro. And how could it be? The PlayStation 5 Pro is coming out in six days. It's a much newer system. It has much newer hardware and software and techniques within it. Now, I really love K the Barbarian's response here. He says, that's factually untrue. Tops are the measurement of machine learning or AI calculations a device can do. A lower number of tops means that machine learning could be limited, leading to things like AI upscaling games being an impossibility. Xbox only has nine tops, while the Pro has 30 tops. So this is just crazy here. And if you look here, you can see this is from Microsoft's own documents. The Xbox Series X is capable of nine tops of 8-bit integer operations and 97 tops of 4-bit. Nobody is using 4-bits, okay? 8-bits is what we calculate the current rate of tops for AI. In comparison, the PlayStation 5 Pro has 300 tops of 8-bit integers for AI upscaling. That is not even close. The Xbox Series X cannot do machine learning AI upscaling. It does not have the capabilities. It does not have the compute power. It does not have the hardware. End of story, period. Close the door on it. You guys need to stop with all of this stuff. Now, I'm really excited for the PlayStation 5 Pro. We have like six days left. Depending when you're watching this video, maybe five days left. It's right around the corner. Of course, I'm going to have it on the channel. We have over 88 games that have now been confirmed to be PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced. I'll go through the list here, like Alan Wake, Apex Legends, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, Diablo, and The Vessel of Hatred, which is an Xbox title. It will look and run better on the PlayStation 5 Pro. EA Sports FC 25, Madden 25, F124, Final Fantasy Rebirth, Helldivers 2, Gran Turismo, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, which just came out. You're going to see VR games such as Kayak VR Mirage, Lies of Peace, Spider-Man 2, Miles Morales, Spider-Man Remastered, Wolverine when it comes out. You know that Call of Duty is going to have a PlayStation 5 Pro mode. So everything is going to look and run better on the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm so excited that we're almost at its release date and we're all going to finally get to enjoy it. We're going to be seeing lots of comparisons on channels. I'm seeing some unboxings. I've seen a couple of unboxing videos already ahead of the embargo. And I will say a little bit of a spoiler here. It pretty much unboxes like a regular PlayStation 5. So nothing really exciting there. But what will be exciting is the capabilities that this system has. I want to know if there are any differences in the UI, if there are any extra features that are on the PlayStation 5 Pro that we don't know of or that are not on the PlayStation 5. I also want to know the performance of these games. I want to know how the boost mode is with older titles that are not patched for the PlayStation 5 Pro because games after September 16th, they have to have a PlayStation 5 Pro mode. Now, some games that came out before that, they will have a PlayStation 5 Pro. I just read some of these to you on the list. 
but there are going to be games that are not going to get a PlayStation 5 Pro mode. And those games, they will take advantage of the boost mode that is available on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So if that game has dynamic resolution, perhaps it's going to render at a native 4K. If the frame rate is open, who knows? Some of these games might be reaching 90, 120 FPS. It's a real exciting time if you're a gamer, especially if you're a PlayStation gamer and you're switching over to the PlayStation 5 Pro and you want to see how these games perform on your system. It's got to be a fantastic time to be a gamer, and I'm really excited for it. Like I said, I'm going to have this stuff on the channel. I'll be doing a day one stream. I'll have the comparisons up, and I'm sure by then you're going to be seeing lots of comparisons from different outlets. Digital Foundry is going to be comparing these games against the PlayStation 5, against the Xbox Series X, and all these guys out there that are coping, thinking that the Xbox Series X is at the same level as the PlayStation 5 Pro are going to be in for a rude awakening. Now, for you guys out there that are upset with me because I'm talking so much about the PlayStation 5 Pro, it's because I'm excited. I'm genuine. I'm not a fake person. The Xbox Series X is just not as exciting for me right now as the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, the games that are on Xbox, I can play them on my PC at the highest fidelity. So, I don't know. It just is what it is. I'm excited for the Pro. Anyways, I wonder what you guys think about today's stories. What are your thoughts on Call of Duty Black Ops 6's record-breaking sales? Once again, for those saying they're not reporting numbers, they're saying that this is the highest grossing ever for a Call of Duty launch. It is the highest subscriber count that Game Pass has ever seen in a day or a release of a game. PC players are up 60%. So the game is doing crazy. Every metric it is breaking. So it is a success. So let's just get over it. Also, I want to know what your thoughts are on the PlayStation 5 Pro's capabilities. The Xbox Series X does not have machine learning AI upscaling. Like I pointed out in this video, it has nine tops of eight integers of performance. The PlayStation 5 Pro has 300. That would make it 291 times more powerful at machine learning AI than the Xbox Series X. These guys are comparing tops with a mobile phone and the mobile phone is still beating out the Xbox Series X in machine learning capabilities, much less the PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, the Xbox Series X is not capable of doing machine learning AI. What are we doing here? It is not capable of doing it. So anyone out there that's believing any of these claims, I don't want to be the one to disappoint you guys, but you got to come back to reality. The Xbox Series X is just not capable of what the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be doing. And we're going to have this console on the platform later next week. We're about six days out. I'm very excited. And finally, we can put all the rumors to rest as we have it in our hands and as we test and show you the differences that it has over the other consoles. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this and all the other topics that we discussed today in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.